Faith is rooted and nourished of love. You got to show love to one another. You got to start showing love to one another in your community. This is the way faith functions. You reach out and you build people's faith. This is the way God does. See, the apostle wrote about faith and love and hope. We relate to God, but we're supposed to walk in the ways of God. See, when Jesus said, by this shall all men know you are my disciple, you see what I do and you do what I do. You learn to follow in the way that I walk in. If I gain people's faith by love, then that's an example of you. That's the way you do within the own body. And that's the way you reach out to people in the world. This is the way you do in your home and in your family. This is stability of a home. This is the stability of a community. This is the stability of a nation. This is the stability of mankind. If you show love and you gain one another's faith by showing love because faith is rooted in love. As a tree is rooted in the ground and it gets its nourishment to grow. Faith is rooted in love and it gets its nourishment of development and growth. And then when it comes to expectation or hope, if these things are crucial for you to have hope or to expect something of one another, to have a hope of being helped of one another, you got to have faith in one another. Through having shown love, because, see, it is faith that substantiates hope, not only to your physical body, but to the body of Christ and to the body of a community. This is the way it functions. Going back to Hebrews chapter 11. Hebrews chapter 11 and verse 2, it says, By this the elders obtain a good report. This is the way of our forefathers. This is the way our forefathers, all that have joined into Christ, have been grafted into Israel, a part of the body of Christ. Christ is the king of the Jews. You have to accept the truth of the scripture. Israel's restoration is drawing near. You need to understand the things of the gospel. He said the elders obtain a good report through faith. In order to function as a people, it is necessary. It is necessary to show love. In order to function in God, God requires that the body of Christ show love to one another. And you got to gain one another's faith. You got to be submissive unto the truth. Charity, love is submissive to truth. Because, see, God's love of the Holy Spirit will give you a heart and mind to hear truth. It believeth all things of God, God's love, nourished by His Spirit. It will give you to receive the things of God. And it would move you to show love towards your fellow man if you just walk in the spirit. Automatically, the body of Christ will come to have faith in one another. You can't function in the gifts of the spirit as a body if you don't have faith in one another. I've heard people say, we're supposed to have faith in God. We ain't supposed to have faith in no man. I've heard people say that. One of the most foolish statements I ever heard. I heard men say that heard men say and heard men say that were married. And I was just like, what? I mean, tell your wife that. She ain't supposed to have faith in no man. Tell your children that. You ain't supposed to have faith in no man. No, 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 no. God don't want us to be ignorant. Do you understand that if you read Genesis. And you have faith in Genesis as the word of God. You need to understand that's faith in a man. 
Moses wrote the first four books of the Bible. If you have faith in the Matthews, Mark, Luke, and John as the word of God, you need to understand that that's faith in men. Because Matthew was a man that wrote in the life of Jesus. And God requires this. The scripture tells that when people, when after the Messiah's resurrection, after Christ's resurrection, that people brought their sick loved ones in the street and laid them in the street that Peter walking by his shadow might fall on their sick loved one that they might be healed. That was faith in Peter. And this is the way the Bible teaches faith. This is the way the Bible teaches unity. That among God's people, you're supposed to have faith in your pastor. You're supposed to have faith in one another. You, this is where your stability comes in at. I heard preachers in the pulpit say you ain't supposed to have faith in no man. How can you function if you don't understand that you have to have faith in one another as a unit? And for God's people, not to understand that you function by faith in one another. You need your arms, you need your eyeballs, you need your legs, and there are other believers in order to get around and do the thing that you need to do, that God has appointed you to do. You need the other members of the body. And you need to have faith in them. This is what Paul was explaining in Corinthians 12. This is what he was explaining. The body is one. And the function in God, the substance of everything. You got to have faith in him. You got to have faith in the Holy Ghost. When God do something for you, don't take it for granted. <coughs> don't go around thinking faith is, is, please don't do this. I know it's called all the radio and TV. I'm not trying to be rude. Don't go around thinking faith is if I just believe I will. I got to just believe I will. I just got to believe I'm going to prosper. That's not faith. That's insanity. If you try to just believe, that somebody gonna do you right that you ain't learn about and don't know about, you are near insane. Or you being led in the way of insanity. Even a child, we say to children, the child says, some stranger come by you and offer you some candy and say, get in this car or something, don't do it. Because a child's faith is easy to gain. We teach and we learn about people before we put our trust in them. That's faith. That's teaching faith there. That's real faith. God never requires of nobody to have faith in him without first showing himself faithful. He didn't do it with Moses. He wrote the first four books of the Bible. He didn't do it with Noah. God revealed himself to Noah. He didn't do it with Enoch and he translated Enoch, but he revealed himself to Enoch first. He didn't do it with, East, with Jacob. He even built himself to Jacob. He built faith in Jacob's heart. And, and the Spirit of God was moving on Jacob coming out of the womb. He had instilled something in his nature. God, he didn't require the, the apostles. Jesus didn't require the apostles to go out and heal the sick and raise dead, walk in miracles, and believe it to be, believe it to happen without him first showing them power in his name. When they didn't even have faith in the power of his name. Don't tell nobody. You got to just believe that you are okay. No, point them toward God. Jesus said, take my yoke upon you and learn about me. I am meek and lonely. I know your every problem. And I got the ability to help you through whatever situation come before you. Look to me and let me reveal myself to you. I will offer faith in your heart. I will do the work to do that. I will reveal to you what I have done for you, and I will show you the love that I have for you. I will do that. I will build faith in your heart. Just take consideration of what I do. Don't never try to just believe nothing. Even if God has been good to you, don't try to just believe nothing be because you need it and or just trying to believe it to be. If God has done great works for you, think back about what he's done. Think back about what he's done for you to build your faith in him. I recall a song, I think it was Shirley Caesar that song, 
uh, about a lady that was ready to uh, turn from God. But then she began thinking back to God, before I turn, I remember when you did this for me. I just want to say thank you before I turn around. And I remember when you did this, but you done this for me. I just want to recall this before I turn around. And when she got through looking back, her faith was strengthening in God so much. She said, God, I can't turn around. If you need something from God, don't try and just believe it. Look back at him. Look back at what he has done for you. Look at where he's brought you from. Time when you were all alone and God made a way. When God made a way for your children, when it looked like they weren't going to live and you didn't know what to do, God made a way. And God brought them through. Look back at what he's done. You know, the Bible records of Saul giving his testimony. And Saul made it clear, so I was on the road to Damascus to go and to persecute the very people of the one that's knocked me down. I had nothing to do with it. I want you to know. And he testified before kings and rulers. I was on the road to the masses, going to pursue God's people, and there was a bright light that shined from heaven down upon me. And I heard a voice saying to me, Saul, Saul, why well, persecuted thou me? Paul took the time to totally separate himself. Said, this is not something I made up in my mind. It's not something that I had nothing to do with. He built my faith in him and revealed himself to me as the power and the Messiah is speaking to me. When I didn't know who he was. God come into your life and he'll show you him. Separate from yourself. And say, trust in me. The Bible says the Holy Ghost came on the day of Pentecost. as a rushing sound and of a mighty wind. As an alien force coming. Coming in the sound of a rushing wind like a tornado coming. And it filled the house where they were sitting. It was not something of their mind. It was not something that they had worked up in their imagination. It was a separate force from their being, an alien force from their being that came down from glory. And they heard it coming from heaven. And it filled the room where they were sitting. And tongues of fire sit up, sit up on them. Tongues sit up on them like as tongues of fire. And they began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them utterance. A totally supernatural occurrence. God said, I will give you the power of myself being in birth and my spirit being in birth and inside you. And you'll be witnesses for me unto the uttermost parts of earth. And he'll be always there in you, confirming my, me and his presence of me inside you. You don't have to just believe of yourself. Anything, just look at Jesus. Feel him if you can feel him inside you. Walk with him. Learn about it. Receive his love and let his love build faith in you. And let faith substantiate hope. He's promised everlasting life. And because of the faith that he's built in you, to believe in him that he's faithful and powerful, you can look forward to going to be with him. The scripture recalled of Jesus, even his flesh would rest in hope. Even our body, when we lay, you ready to lay it down in time to lay it down, or before we lay it down, we have the hope of our flesh resting in hope, not just our spirit. But our flesh shall rest in hope. Jesus said, not a hair of your head shall perish. Faith substantiates hope. God, the Father, Jesus Christ, his Son, he wants to rest in faith in him. Jesus is the word of God that became flesh, and he dwelt among us, and he made the way for man, gave man hope, became man, taking on the nature, the seed of Abraham, flesh and blood, as we in the same flesh and blood. Made of a woman, the same flesh and blood that we are. And he gave us his hope. He's the substance of everything now. And he was the substance of everything then, but now the substance of everything is also a man. The word is now a man. He became a man. Let me bring many sons unto God. 
take home, love home. I take it home, love baby.